Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and uh, welcome to the first part of building the Revel Fair Play tugboat. Uh, I had, as you may have noticed if you caught my uh, first live stream introduction, or go and watch it now, uh, I'm actually going to be building two of these at once, because I want to do a, a small diorama with, um, say, one brand new and one old and worn out. Uh, so, I've got one kit there, I've got another box that I haven't opened yet, exactly the same. So I'm going to be doing, say, the, the same to both, and then wrecking one, basically. Uh, so the size of the boat itself is going to be there. It is 144, or 1 to 144, not 144 to 1, that'd be huge. Um, as a Rebel kit, obviously the, the fit isn't ideal. But I'll be working on that as the build progresses. Um, I'll be painting them both the same colour schemes, but one, I say, will be new pristine, and one will be damaged and rusty and weathered and worn and up in dry dock is the plan at the moment. Um, the instructions, as a lot of these rebel kits, are lots of separate pages uh, with the, the paint breakdowns of their own paints, which I'll be using say similar colours but not identical as it's not a brand of paint that I tend to use. Um, I'm not sure how far this first part is going to get. Uh, obviously some of it needs to be painted as it's built, some of it needs to be painted all in one when it's done. So it's going to be a sort of mix and match series but I can't see it being more than two or three parts of a, a video build as it's not a huge kit. Lots of there's only like four or five sprues, one of which is transparent. Um, the other's in terms of framework and the main sort of body of the boat. Uh, one for the deck and lots of little bits that I'm sure will become apparent as we go. Uh, I noticed these are actually the first part on the instructions, which are the uh, engine propeller mountings. Um, so, yeah, I'll. Uh, my first few bits as ever cut off the sprue you don't need to see that and then get some of it assembled and show you where we are and start with some painting um, it does say to start with the engines and the propellers uh, but whether I'm going to be painting individually or painting as assembled we'll figure it out so um, I'll be starting this now and catch up with you on the video in a short while Right, first two parts going together, first problem, the fit is really not great. Uh, I've actually used some extra thin on the, the end here. I'm just holding that to make sure that sets. And obviously with that stuck together, the front sort of isn't. So what I'm planning on doing is pretty much working my way along, getting each bit set, and then going down to the next bit along. So I'm just sticking those there. It takes longer than that for it to set, but I'm hoping that if I can get these two bits together in the, the bottom of the hull, then I can clamp those. And that will hold the, the first bit together. And then I can worry about the front in a minute. So let's get that down to there. Just grab a little clamp. Hold that whole piece together. Obviously this is gonna be not a highly visible bit anyway, but I'll still be sanding it and priming it. Once the interior supports go in, this is obviously gonna to fit together slightly differently anyway, so being the extra thin gives me that little bit of time to play around with it and get it right. Might need to use some sprue glue to fill it as well. Uh, right, this one needs to go in the bit here. Yeah, that can go in afterwards without any problem. So I'll get the main bit put together first. Uh, one side of that is there and there. And then I'll get the supports on and then get on with the build. I just thought I'd 
show you the initial problem and my hopeful solution for it. So I'll uh, stop this again and carry on and see you in a bit. It might be hard to believe, but I actually think I have a plan. Uh, I've got together the bits, I've glued together and sanded down the, the rough seam lines on these. Uh, got the boat, comes with a stand, so it's quite convenient. That's the, the hull put together, ready to go. Um, now, there's one other part that's got to be in the the dark, sort of burgundy red, the same as the, the whole base, base of the boat, um, which is just, this is the, the interior of the cabin. Uh, these, where's my little pointy man? There we go. Um, the main panel uh, sort of control area, uh, the tops of the, the controls are a different colour, but the main bit itself is actually going to be in the same red. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is get these parts all primed up and painted. I'm going to install the propellers, or at least the, the motors of the propellers, which are all going to be in the red, as are whichever these bits are that go on the front here, like that, pretty much. Uh, but I'm not going to put the actual blades on yet, because they do need more detail work doing to them. The, the main surround is in the same red, so I need to do that, but the blades themselves and the little edge pieces do, do need to be in a different colour, so it'd be easiest to do those off. So I'm going to get these four four bits put onto the, the base, uh, get these on sticks and primed and painted, and this again primed, uh, masked up around the edge and then paint that. But before I do all that, I'm going to get these stuck on now, but before I paint it I'll be doing the same again with the other boat, so I'll have two lots of everything to go, and then that's all that colour done. So that's nice and easy and out of the way. Uh, so just basically going to be using extra thin to get these uh, stuck on, so I might as well do one while you're here, uh, get them the right way round, so the propellers go at the back, they key in quite, nice, quite neatly, and stick in there, I'll put a little bit more extra thin on the top just to get that stuck in, uh, so I'll do that on all of them, get that done, and all done again, which I don't need to film, so I'll just get that done, and then I'll be ready to get the painting, and the priming and the painting done, so see you in a moment. Right, welcome to the ever-changing mind. Um, I've changed my mind. I've got the two boats done, not primed yet, because I came up with the idea that I don't need to prime and paint all of it. Uh, they have got everything ready to go, and was just about to start painting when I thought, wait a minute, one of these is going to be in the water. Uh, now, as per the, the box art, most of the hull is actually below the waterline. So, instead of having to put one in water and build water to be that deep, I'm going to cut the bottom of the boat off. So pretty much going to be going along, cutting away the curved piece, and then I can just put that onto a water diorama base, and it will look like the rest of the hull is under the water. So I don't need to prime paint, I didn't need to build any of all this on one of them. Uh, now looking at the, the seam line on the back here, uh, one of them is going to be up out of the water. So one was slightly better than the other. Um, I think this was... I can't decide now, they're both pretty good. I spent a lot of time getting them both primed down, but... Uh, yeah, this one isn't quite so nice. So, this is my hero, hero boat, which is the nicest finished, which is the one that's going to be wrecked. So I'm going to put that aside. That, as it is, is ready to be primed and then, I say, painted up in the red. Uh, this one, that bit is going to be primed and painted. Then I'm not actually going to be using. And the bottom of this I need to remove, basically, just leaving myself with the top bit. Now I'm slightly concerned in that most of the adhesion between all of it is on the bottom bit, but I'm going to be using a Dremel 
basically just cutting across through all the plastic in a straight-ish line across here um, and then obviously getting that painted up as well let's see about these bits so obviously something needs to go in there and that's got to be done before I paint it but I'm gonna get it cut off now uh, I'll see how it goes on film but obviously the drawer is gonna make some noise so I might end up doing it off camera anyway but uh, it's quite a thin plastic so it shouldn't be too difficult I'm just gonna start in the middle and basically making sure my thumb isn't on the other side just for Basically that's what I'm doing all the way around. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's just going to be an annoying noise. More annoying than me talking. Uh, so I'll show you that when I've got it cut down and ready to go. But uh, see you in a moment. Right, before I start the priming I thought I'd show you the After Effects. Uh, basically just managed to cut it. Quite a straight line even if I do say so myself. And that now sits relatively flat it's obviously the water's still going to be coming up slightly above where I've cut anyway so it doesn't matter if it's not exactly flat but that's pretty much what I was going for so that can sit in some water or water effect and will eventually look like it's floating uh, right now I'm going to get the priming done so I don't need to worry about that or the bottom half put that aside I'll be keeping that just in case I need it for anything but I'm pretty sure that's not going to be used now uh, so, this and the other bits need to be primed, uh, which I'm going to be doing in grey, I think I've decided on these. And then I'll mix up the, the red to finish this off. I'm just going to file these edges down a little bit more to make sure they're fairly smooth, but then I'll get that priming done. See you in a moment. Alright, I've got a new camera set up again to go with a new bench, so I'm not sure how this is going to actually work out, but uh, that's the best angle I can get on the spray booth that I've got now. Uh, right, I've done the red, which I've mixed up using uh, Vallejo red and some grey blue. Uh, just a touch of grey blue in there, just to darken it down a bit from the red, make it a bit more sort of purpley. Uh, so I've done the hull, the underside of the boat that's actually going to be a wreck, and the bit that I've cut off, I didn't bother painting, obviously. Uh, but the rest of it I've done in, I uh, did need to re-glue that as well, uh, I've redone that in the red that I'm going to be using, let me lay that back over the other way so that gets time to sit in there. Um, I have also done the, uh, just get it under the light, uh, the control control room which has to be done in the same red. Uh, the top bits in there say black, but I think I'm going to add in some metallics in there as well, just to highlight the controls. I don't know how much of that's going to be visible once it's done. Uh, and the two um, propellers that I'm going to be using, obviously I didn't bother doing the other two that are cut off underwater. Uh, these, once they dry, do need some highlighting doing on the, the pronounced edge pieces and the interior blades uh, so I need to leave that to dry and then I'll be getting on and uh, doing some more the next bit after that is putting the uh, deck in so you're learning all these naval terms it's great uh, yeah I've got a couple of bits to put into these front portholes on both of them uh, and then it's the deck going together the decks actually built separately and then assembled onto it so I'll be getting onto that in a little while. Uh, then it's just basically the control tower and thing. And then that's fitted onto the deck, and then we're done. So uh, lots of little bits, but not so much to worry about really. Uh, so I'll uh, catch you in a moment when this is dry, and I'll do some brushwork on touch details. Right, I've done the next bits. The little porthole covers I've got primed. I uh, need to wait for those to dry before I can paint them. Uh, the inside pieces are going to be the blue and then aluminium for the anchor themselves. Uh, but 
most of this actually needs to be blue. I didn't notice from the, you know, general ineptitude. Um, there's most of the hull is uh, red, but there's a blue stripe across, which is basically the waterline. So most of this is actually going to be blue. There's going to be a bit of red just sort of around the bottom here that I just need to mask off. And obviously most of this again needs to mask off a straight line, basically parallel with the, the top there. Uh, so I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm going to wait till the other bits are dry and then do those. Uh, these have come out quite nicely with the red there. But again, I don't need those for a little while anyway. I was only doing those immediately because I had the red mixed up. Uh, so next up is these, uh, the actual propellers themselves, the rotors, blades. So the inside, um, the actual blades themselves are in brass. So I've got some bright brass, bright brass that I'm mixing up. I'm just going to put into a wet palette here. Nice blob of that in there. And then I'll be brush painting that with a brush. Uh, so I'll start on one and then so do most of it off camera. Uh, all of the inside does need to be. I could spray this obviously, but I figure it's just as easy to do brush painting on a small area like this. Uh, not worrying about being very neat, just got neat around the edges. Which I'll go back in with a second coat and make sure I get that up to, but not on the inside piece. As ever, it's not easy to film this while I'm doing it, because obviously I need to be quite close to it to see what I'm doing. And that's also where the camera needs to be, so I'm just sort of blocking this out. Now I'll go back in and another coat once it's dry and once I'm not worrying about where you lot are. Uh, now these are different, they, the blades go in different directions. I'm assuming that there's a reason for that but don't know what that would be. Uh, apologies also for the noise in the background. Um, as you may have noticed if you watched the other video that I put up recently, I've got a 3D printer. So that's doing a long print run at the moment. It's been going for about five hours and it's got a bit longer than that to go before it's finished what it's printing at the moment. So if you can hear a whirring, screaming in the background, that's exactly what that is. So apologies if it's distracting. And even more apologies if it isn't distracting until I mentioned it and now you're listening out for it because, uh, yeah, sorry. Right, that's, I say, the basic idea with this, just to get the colour down there. And then, as I say, I'll go in and neaten it up in a bit. Uh, also, these raised edges around the edge there on is doing aluminium which is exactly the same process I'm going to do that by brush as well where it's raised I can sort of go in with the edge along here but uh, I'll get the brass done first and then that and then get them assembled mask off and do the blue which I'm not going to bother filming nothing, nothing extra to show you on that uh, when that's done I'll show you those bits and then I'll be starting on the deck so see you soon and there we are so far. I've done the uh, bronze inside bit and the highlights around the edge on both of those. I haven't fitted them to the boat yet. Now the boat, I painted the blue over the red and it came out a little bit sort of purple. So I've reprimed it and done it in blue, straight blue, and it's come out much nicer. I'm happier with that. Still got the masking on there at the moment, so let's just get rid of that. It should leave us with the red just under where the water line's going to be. Ah, a little bit touching up needed there, not a problem. I've still got some of that red mixed up. Don't know if that seeped under or over, but there we go, right. So, 
I'm happy with the way that's come out. That will be the one that's in the water anyway, so you won't be able to see much of that anyway by the time it's finished. But that's that. Uh, right, what I'm going to do, I've got these, which are the anchors for both of them. Now, with these, uh, two of them are obviously going to be on the new new one, shiny aluminium, not a problem. Two of them are going to be on the old one. Now, I want them to look old and worn and rusty. Now, rust obviously doesn't happen below the waterline, but it does happen above the waterline. So these anchors are going to be used, sunk down into the water, and then raised up, and then they might rust a bit. So I've got some metallic rust paint, which I'm going to just try and see how that looks. I don't want it to be uh, too much over the top, but I do want it to look worn and used so let me just get a bit closer with my visor on this again I don't know how well I'll be able to let you see what I'm doing let's bring you down there how's that yeah you should be able to see that and I should hopefully still be able to see that as well so I'm going to use some rust on a brush almost dry brushing uh, let's see that's where you can see it no I can't see there uh, let's move you back up again sorry right let's try that now I'm going to be adding some of this rust just in almost covering really just sort of making sure I'm getting in the grooves just adding a little bit of texture to that sorry knocking the camera as well I hope you can see some of that in there just adding a little bit of darkening and I reckon that will rust down there as well rust will dribble and drip into all the metal around there so I reckon that's probably what I'm aiming for I'll see what it looks like when it dries I'm knocking the camera again. I'm definitely going to have to find somewhere else to work all this. Let's just get that covered. I'm making sure I'm going sort of down with gravity anyway, so everything will be just flowing downwards. So I hope that. Just gives the effect of it being an older, warm one. So I've got to make sure I get them on the right boat. Uh, putting them on the boat is going to be the next step. So I'll get them together in a moment. Let me get the other masking off the other boat while I'm here anyway. I cover this completely. So Hopefully this one's going to be better than the other one. This is the one that's going to be the old, worn out boat. But obviously needs to be weathered and rusty and nasty so I need to work on that afterwards so I did consider doing it before and using chipping fluid and things like that to get rid of the paint over the top but the bit below the waterline isn't rusty that doesn't rust because there's no air it's only water that surrounds it so I'm not too worried about that, it is the stuff a little bit higher that gets the worst for wear. And I will be doing some more sort of damage and work on that as well. Let's get a start on the edge of this, come on. Putting on masking is not too bad, it's the taking it off that I have trouble with now. That one looks nicer. Happier with that. Even happier if I get to the bit and peel it off. Yep, that's working well. 
Looking good. I'm happy with that. So, that's that. Let's get these bits on as well. Figure out which way around they need to go. There's two cutouts at the bottom there. And one blob at the top. So that will be going on pretty much like that. So let's get some glue. And there, and a little bit on those bits as well. Make sure I'm getting it the right way round. Yep, that's the one that's key to go that way. Same again for this one. In. So that's the old warm ones, which is this one. Uh, so I do want to let them dry a little bit before I try playing with those. So let's move that to one side. Grab the other bit. These are the ones that are going on the front here. So I've got one. Now they are shaped. So you need to make sure you get them the right way around. that one yep okay, right first time impressive so just glue around the edge ah, that my finger and raise it into the gap That's a good match for the blue as well. Now, it was a little bit off before. This was a brighter blue than the the other that was still sort of burgundy. So, redoing it sometimes works. Sometimes you have to go back and do it again if it didn't work quite right first time. There you go. That's that in there. Right, I'm going to get this say touched up with the bit of red in there and then that will be on to the next bit the uh, the deck so see you in a moment okay that's all of the uh, front bits the anchors put in and I've decided, and um, the, the touched up the, the paintwork there a little bit, uh, decided this is as good a place as any to call a break for this part of the video. Um, the deck is quite an involved bit, and there's not really anywhere along there to stop. So I'm going to stop here. Um, I call this the end of this part, and start fresh with the deck on part two. So thanks for watching. Uh, as ever, like the channel, subscribe, and uh, come back for the next part when it comes up in a few days week or so uh, right thank you see you soon bye